I'm a fever. I behave. What in the tarnation? Is that a talking virus? Have you ever wondered why you have a fever when you're sick? Well, hun, it's 99.9. .9. That's a little better, isn't it? I don't feel good. My mommy took bad medicine, and she killed millions of my friends. She murdered. Oh, are you talking about the cold medicine I took? I'm not the murderer. You're the parasite. I didn't invite you in my nose, you squatter. All right, you two, that is enough. I'm about to go over there and get Whitney's Lysol and spritz you with it. No, not the sting spray. I I behave. Well, Lauren, had you not gone outside with wet hair and caught a chill, we wouldn't be doing this right now. That is not true, Mom. You need a virus to become infected, not a chill. Oh, whatever with your sciencey new revelations. I'm going to go make Lauren some chicken soup to make her feel better. This germ is about annoying as a June bug stuck on your blouse. Why are you two even talking to a germ? She is a guest in the home. Whether she was invited or not, it is rude not to speak to her. How did I end up in this family? <laughs> I've been asking myself that for years. But why does the body temperature have to be 98.6? I mean, I've gone running and I got hot and I felt fine. So you feel good after you've taken a run in the heat? with all the blood rush to your face and you're panting and heart racing and you're sweating like a fish pulled out of water. That feels good. Well, explain why it has to be exactly a certain temperature for us to be normal. I mean, why do we get fevers? Please do not say that she gave me a fever. I won't be able to deal with that. Our bodies regulate temperature in a process called thermoregulation, which is controlled by a small structure of the brain called the hypothalamus. Even when surrounding temperatures fluctuate, the body keeps itself right around 37 Celsius or 98.6 Fahrenheit. It can fluctuate slightly before you start feeling effects from your nervous system, muscles, organs, and glands, which all work together to keep your body temperature stable. Maintaining a relatively specific body temperature is part of a process called homeostasis. Homeostasis means when a living thing actively maintains fairly stable conditions needed for survival, such as temperature, pH, blood volume, and pressure, heart rate, so on. So why do we need to do this? We have what are called enzymes that can work best at the right temperature and the pH in the surrounding fluid. We'll talk about pH later. Let's talk about enzymes. They're super important to the body. They're tiny molecules, usually protein, but not always. They catalyze, or in other words, they enable reactions to occur. A reaction is a rearrangement of a structure of a substance. Here's an example. If you eat jelly beans, you can't have intact jelly beans floating around your blood, right? The body must break them down into sugars that we can use. That takes reactions and enzymes enable those to occur. Think of an enzyme as a sales clerk of a store that only sells pink cupcakes. Jamie wants to buy one, but she can't unless the sales clerk opens the store. So Jamie waits outside until the enzyme store clerk unlocks the front door. She then walks inside, buys a pink cupcake, and exits the store. Both the store and Jamie have changed in structure. Store has one less cupcake and more money, and Jamie now has a cupcake and less money. The sales clerk or enzyme catalyzed or enabled the sale, which is the reaction in this example. Let's take this a step further. If the store's ambiance temperature was too high, it would destroy that cupcake for sale. The store would then have nothing to sell and close forever. On the other end, if the store's freezing, no customers would come inside to shop for the cupcake, and the cupcake would freeze and render it useless for a while. Therefore, the store's temperature needs to be just right for optimal shopping. So now we know why we have to regulate our body temperature. Let's go to Oregon City and see what happens when Lauren 
fights a fever. This is for the anterior hypothalamus. I mean, I could have allowed the bloodstream to carry it here, but it's so urgent. So here, the body temp has dropped below normal. I guess hypothalamus's afferent sensing receptors aren't functioning. It's urgent. We must get the hypothalamus to send word through the efferent system to rise the body temperature back to 37C 98.6F by vessel constriction and shivering. It's all in the memo. Okay. Hypothalamus is reading it and she is sending the signals now. Haven't I seen you in here before? No, I've never been here. One of you gave me a Pyrogen report about a year ago, and it was to trick us into increasing the body temperature above normal. Today, the body temperature didn't drop, now did it? All I know is we don't have a lot of time. <coughs> I don't feel so good. That was an endogenous Pyrogen report, wasn't it? Interleukin 1, 6, maybe a TNF? No. The signals went out and we cannot stop them. I don't know why you immune cells do that to us. It's selfish. You know that high temperatures kill neurons, which are irreplaceable. They also kill enzymes. Now, we can't very well run Lauren's body without enzymes, can we? You wouldn't agree to it otherwise. We need the temperature increased to recruit more immune cells to the battlefield. We also need to reduce protein production because we all know viruses steal the building blocks of our proteins to make more of their terrible selves. Also, we need to inhibit the growth of invaders. The immune cells would appreciate it if you guys would just back us up for once. Not just worry about homeostasis. Bye. Smell you later. Attention, organ systems. We've been duped by the immune system to increase the body temperature above normal. It will take a while to get it back, but for now, let's switch to using proteins and fats for energy and let's limit the available sugars just in case there's also a bacterial invader because they will feast on the available sugar and get stronger. Check in, um, heart, how are you doing? Brain, we're losing fluid, which is losing blood volume. Can you please tell Lauren that she's thirsty? Okay, Lauren needs more oxygen in her tissues to create the energy that she needs to fight this higher temperature. So, I've increased my rate and the pressure in my distribution tubes to help get this oxygen to the tissues so she can make the energy. And also, the moment I got the signal, I shunted the blood from the skin to the vital organs so she would feel cold and her muscles would contract and make her shiver and it, it increased her temperature. Brian, you just need to switch off hunger. All we need right now is fluids and I can pass those damn lightning fast to the small intestine for some absorption. Yes, we have shut down for the most part, but we are concentrating on trying not to lose cells, okay? Lungs, please give your status. On behalf of the pulmonary system, we apologize, but the lungs are too busy to check in. We've increased the breathing rate to get more oxygen so we can pass it off to the blood as fast as possible. Given all of the mucus everywhere, we are having a difficult time. Lungs have requested for you to trigger a cough session. Organ systems, I'm about to put Lauren to sleep um, to conserve some energy. Um, good night. Hopefully the hypothalamus can get us all back on track. As you can see, the immune cells signal the hypothalamus of the brain to raise the temperature above normal using a signal released from the white blood cell called a cytokine, specifically a pyrogen cytokine. This is a cell signal to move from the source cell to another destination in the body. The hypothalamus sends signals to the cardiovascular system to move blood from the skin into the core, where your vital organs are. You feel cold and you start to shiver, thereby contracting your skeletal muscles, which produce heat and raise your body temperature. This causes a fever, which aids in a fight against infection. And there's just many ways that a fever can help fight an infection. Oh, I see I'm boring, you passed out. I'm still awake. 
I love your story. I like it when it gets hot and there's no poil change for me. Hush it. I'm not gonna sit here and talk to a virus. Like, no doubt. Why are we placating it? I could just spray it with Lysol. Well, hun, another one's right behind it. It's futile. We just need to get Lauren in bed. Hello. I overheard that you have an ugly virus. I will take care of it for you. Hey, what you with those things? See you later. Well, that just happened. What is she gonna do with that? I don't think we want to know. I hope you enjoyed the third episode of Dr. Bond's World. Join us next week for heart, lungs, liver, oh my! That's where we're gonna discuss the anatomy of the human body, main functions of your organs, and we'll learn what Bomb Bomb Bit Love plans to do with Gina Germ. Hopefully, Lauren will be better by then, but let's hope no one else gets sick. Rhinoviruses are so contagious. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss an episode. The episodes will be released every Thursday at 4 p.m. Central.